Live from downtown Vancouver at the Vancouver Film School campus, it's time for EP Live. Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest on everything cool. Happy Friday. It is the weekend. It is almost time for you guys to start playing. All the fun things that you've been earning your money to spend on, you can now have the whole weekend to enjoy those video games and those movies and uh, all the fun entertainment that makes life worth living. Yes? Yes, right? Yes, right sway. Uh, we've got an awesome show for you guys today. We've got uh, a couple of great dudes from PopCap that have come down to join us to talk about Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville. I can't wait to get into this. I've been playing the game all week and it is very fun. Uh, but you know, and we're also going to be reviewing Maleficent. I've got some first thoughts on Luigi's Mansion 3. We're going to take a look at the uh, replicate systems. we got a pack show for you. But we're going to kick things off like we always do with the rundown and today it is dedicated to Emac, who says it's time to nut up or shut up. Apparently a big fan of uh, Zombieland, which is actually really good. Uh, all right, after the poor... Oh, let's get started with your rundown. Now, after the poor reception of the in-game economy in last year's Black Ops 4, Activision is changing things with the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare. They've announced that there will be no loot boxes in the game. Instead, there will be optional uh, an optional battle pass system, similar to Fortnite or Apex Legends, allowing players to buy cosmetic items and also spend money to speed up their uh, and also spend money to speed up their acquisition of new guns and gear. The last game, Black Ops 4, had loot boxes in the form of buyable reserve crates, and fans were worried that they'd return in Modern Warfare after discovering several references to them in the beta test, so apparently Activision has changed course. On top of no loot boxes, all post-launch maps and modes will be free, and they'll be available on all platforms simultaneously, so no more uh, timed exclusives. Finally, there will be cross-platform multiplayer between the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, making this the first Call of Duty game to have it, and the game deploys next week. I can't wait to dive into this game. It's going to be massive, and um, I've seen a little bit of the, the single-player campaign. It's going to be controversial. I do know that there is still some controversy about one of the modes. I can't remember. There's a million modes in the game. Uh, being exclusive to one platform. I think it's the PlayStation 4 for a while. Uh, but I, uh, what's that? One year, yeah. And so, you know, there's still some anger directed at Activision for that and also all the stuff going on with the uh, the Blizzard and the China stuff. So Activision's stepping around some minefields right now uh, or some mines on the minefield. But you know what? I know that this team at Infinity Ward has been killing themselves to make this game and uh, it looks incredible. I've played the multiplayer, crazy fun. They, you know, they have to bank on that, right? It has to be crazy fun. It's the single player that I'm waiting uh, for the word to get out on. I can't wait to see some of the reviews and some of the comments because they're, they're really going for something big here. Uh, but it looks incredible, I'll tell you that, man. The visuals in that game are stunning. Uh, and so we'll have a review on that very soon. I think that this crossplay stuff is great. I also think that there's a lot of movement in the video game industry right now to kind of shore up how to deal with uh, microtransactions and loot boxes. And uh, to be fair to everybody, and it's it's you know kind of dangerous territory territory for all these game companies. You can't really blame studios for wanting to make money. Uh, in their business, these are businesses after all, um, but I think it doesn't pay to make gamers unhappy. And I think we've had a lot of years of pissed off video gamers and I think it's time to kind of change the tune. I think there are way too many YouTube channels out there where people have made a career out of being pissed off. The angry gamer scene has got to go away. I think the video game, uh, the video game industry should really band together to, to put the angry video game commentators on YouTube out of business or get them focused on something else. Maybe get, get them angry about all the superhero movies or something. I don't know. All right, let's move on. Speaking of superhero movies, it sounds like the new Batman movie is going to be riddled with supervillains. Director Matt Reeves has announced that his all-new Bat film has cast actor Paul Dano as the iconic Gotham evildoer, the Riddler. Another actor, Jonah Hill, was rumored to be in talks for the same part, but he reportedly passed. Paul Dano is mostly known for roles in smaller indie movies and serious dramas like There Will Be Blood and 12 Years a Slave, so his role as the Riddler will be his biggest yet by far. 
As for the Riddler himself, despite being one of Batman's most famous villains, the character hasn't appeared in a big screen movie since Batman Forever in 1995, but the less said about that, the better. The new Batman movie is set to star Twilight's Robert Pattinson as the Cape Crusader, and will also feature characters like Catwoman and Commissioner Gordon, and filming begins early next year. Uh, Paul Dano is an excellent choice for the Riddler. The guy um, always kind of has this nervous, intelligent energy about him in every performance that I've seen him in, and he's terrific in every performance that I've seen him in. Uh, and I think he's actually a better fit for the character of the Riddler than Jonah Hill is. I think the obvious sort of connection for Jonah Hill is to think, okay, this guy would make a great penguin. He's apparently walked away, but I think there's still wiggle room here. I think there's still an opportunity to come back and have contract negotiations. This movie's starting to sound like it's going to be incredible. There's some really, really great people surrounding this. Jeffrey Wright is supposed to be Commissioner Gordon. Zoe Kravitz is uh, the new Catwoman. Um, you know, Paul Dano is the Riddler. That's great. I uh, can't wait to hear who Two-Face is going to be. And uh, Jonah Hill, come on, man. You don't need all the money you're asking for. Scale it back a little bit and be the best penguin we've ever seen, okay? With all respects to Danny DeVito. All right, and it looks like another long-awaited DC movie adaptation is finally moving forward. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has announced that the long-in-development Black Adam movie will begin production in July 2020. Johnson has been attached to the project for almost a decade, and it's gone through several different filmmakers and iterations as the DC movie universe has struggled to find its footing. Black Adam is an anti-hero who's often portrayed as the arch-nemesis of the do-gooder Shazam, so it's unclear if the new movie will feature Zachary Levi as its hero or if The Rock will appear in the next Shazam sequel. Of course, they've got to be planning some kind of crossover here. I mean, The Rock, he's in every movie, and some of them open really well and do quite well, um, and some of them struggle, and I think there is this uh, rock exhaustion out there. We all love him. He's awesome, right? I mean, who doesn't like this guy? He's great. But I think the smart play, because Zach Levi just impressed us all with his performances uh, as Shazam, is to put them together and uh, make it... Uh, you know, filled with levity and some some uh, nice comedy bits, and I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, I mean, the guy looks like a living superhero already, so I think it's pretty cool that he's going to be playing something in the DC universe. Hopefully it's great, and hopefully this next couple of years really... I mean, the Joker, even though it's not in this sort of DC movie universe as we know, still, uh, I thought, pretty phenomenal movie. And uh, I know it's controversial, not everybody feels the same way, but I thought it was pretty phenomenal. And uh, even as a, a piece of movie making, it was pretty remarkable. And I've heard that the Watchmen uh, show that's hitting HBO this weekend is supposed to be pretty damn cool as well. I'll have a review on the first episode next week. Um, so it does feel like there's some good movement happening with DC and its uh, filmed properties. There's a lot of buzz about the, uh, the crossover event with uh, all the CW shows as well. Um, so hopefully, Hopefully, this next sort of bout of uh, DC films will be great, and, uh, and that will include The Rock as Black Adam. I, I want to see it. I'm a fan of what most of the stuff that was in Shazam. I think they did a good job with Shazam. All right, the new Switch Lite hasn't made the system light on sales. The original Switch and Switch Lite together have now sold more than 15 million units in North America, beating the worldwide lifetime sales of the last Nintendo console, the Wii U. Worldwide, the Switch has now sold almost 40 million units, making one of the fastest selling consoles of all time. And uh, that is phenomenal. Congratulations to Nintendo. And I don't know if the world was gonna was predicting that when they launched the Switch. I think there was a lot of uh, um, hesitation to say that this was gonna take over the world, but Nintendo hit with the right product at the right time and kind of uh, made good on a lot of the promises that the Wii U seemed to kind of project out there. It's like, oh yeah, you get a screen to play your games on, but you can't leave the house with it? That's so weird. Why is it called Wii U? I bet they're going to regret that for the rest of uh, their, their lives, that one, actually. Uh, but the Switch did well right out of the gate, and it's done um, phenomenal because of the very, very smart software strategy. And you know what? This year has been uh, incredible for games on the Nintendo Switch platform. So uh, kudos to Nintendo.